Welcome to this Syngenta video on how to use the new BYDV Assist app. Once you've downloaded it from the app stores, you'll see the icon appear either on your home screen or in your app tray. Simply click on the app and now the new interface will load up where you can sign in with your email and password. If you haven't already got an account, you can see the top right corner, there's a register button. Once you have your details, just put in your email address and password, click the sign in button and then the app will launch. When you first sign to the app you will see there's no fields created as you haven't put in any data yet and there's two interactive objects on the screen. The top right is where we see information about the app where you can update your profile, change your name, company, uh, what sector of the industry you're in and obviously your password. The other important things about this section is also the, the, the about section which gives you some information around what the app is used for and how it works. And then finally you can see the logout, so if you want to log out the app and not get updates from it you can see you can tap on this icon, it will take you to the logout screen also making you aware when the last time it synced your data to the cloud so that all your field information is saved and you can choose to either log out or not. Going back to the home screen, if you see the plus icon on the bottom right, clicking on that will allow us to create a field. If you're unsure what any of these fields mean, in the top right we have the question mark icon which leads you through a how to and reasons behind each of the segments in this add field page. So looking at this we can add a field, so oak tree field. You can also add a field location. Generally, I use a postcode. So I'm going to use CB215XE for Fallborn. The weather model is a full kilometer accurate model to that location. Now, let's go back to October. Let's say I drilled on the 1st of October last autumn. As you can note here, I can't put anything in the future, so it either has to already have happened or on the current date and then you can see I can't have a germination date past what I put in for my drill date so let's say it came up a week later and the, the emergence date is the most important thing as that will tell you when the model will start accumulating those day degrees and you can also do the same for your last treatment but let's say I haven't done one yet so press the create field button and you'll start to create that field you input to the data for, for that location once created, it will make you aware. The first thing you can see on the screen is obviously the edit button, so if a mistake was made, you can go back into the field and edit any element of it, or you can press the delete button at the top and it will ask you if you want to delete the field. You can see we've got a yellow icon on the oak tree field, so it's saying that I've got to the 145 day degree mark. This is an early warning to check the field for aphids before what we'd expect it on the 30th of June. This is more uh, for autumn cereals, but that's what it has put in for right now. And when you click on the icon, it will take you to the analysis page for each field you have. And you can see the blue dot there, that's the today's date, telling you how many uh, growing day degrees I've got. So that's the cumulative day degree for that day, above three degrees, and the totals of that date. So you can see we're just before that 170. So if I click on the red, it will tell me that I'm estimated to hit the threshold tomorrow which is see 180 day degrees and you can see in yellow there we have the 145 just to check your crops for aphids to give you a bit of time uh, to think about doing an application on the screen we made it slightly easier to see you have previous 170 day degree T sums so you can see the arrow in the left there if you click it you'll be finding the different pages so we can go click quite rapidly, go all the way back to October. So you can see that the 30th of October is when I got my first T sum. So let's say, okay, on my last treatment, I put it in in October 30th. Once that's input as the last treatment date, it will go back and calculate the T sum 170, reducing it down to zero on that 30th of October, but also keeping it at zero for one week, indicating that we've got one week of protection where aphids can't accumulate. So we go back to October, you can see it's got a purple dot there saying my last treatment was on the 30th of October. 
and then you can see on the next page where we've got the 31st of October going to November and December we've got a flat line for one week so anywhere we've got a flat line or regularly flat line later in the month such as the end of November that's saying that we're probably around about three degrees or lower and we're not having any cumulative day temperatures the other thing this page does so if I was planning to do another spray on the 29th of December I could have gone into the spray guide and it would give me a five day forecast of what the spray events were like so you can either have a daily view looking at each day in detail what it's like or you can press the top right with the five days and have a 24 hour overview if you've got compromised conditions less ideal or limited conditions and ideal conditions in green there so that will hopefully help you plan this season's applications for stopping the secondary spread of aphids in your winter cereals